will, uh, will start in August. Um, and the fellowship is open to anybody, so any of you who are interested, take a look, make your case, and hope to see you in either of those two meetings. Um, this is the next gen application round, and as I said, you should be from a region where the meeting is taking place to participate in this. So for this case, um, the ICANN meeting in Panama, you'd need to be in further education in what we described as the Latin American and Caribbean region. And then for Barcelona, you'd have to be in the European region, taking education in that region. So the last thing is a program called ICANN Learn, which is an online learning platform. It's just been updated, so it's actually sort of fully compliant with the MOOC and online learning platforms that you see from some of the major universities and also organizations like Coursera. Um, we're beginning to populate it with courses, and if you have courses, you're very welcome to put them online with us. You just have to contact the operators and they will tell you how to do that. But we're hoping for more and more course information to be available on, on ICANN Learn soon. It's fully interactive and there you go. <coughs> So, um, getting involved, attend an ICANN public meeting. You're very lucky. There's one going to take place up the, up the road, so hope to see you there for the next five or six or seven days. Um, you can start this journey with, the, with um, uh, as I said, with, by looking at how you might participate in next gen or fellowship. There's the online courses. Um, there are events in your region, I hope, and I don't know what events you might be organizing as ALSs, but if you want them, we can try and support them, I think. And, um, and then there's community groups that might be possible and participate in your ISOC chapter because we do have some overlap, that's good. A lot of the ALSs are also internet society chapters. Um, and then there are newsletters and alerts and all kinds of things. We have a lot of media ongoing. Usually for ICANN, if you meet one of us, you'll find that our email addresses are our first name, dot, family name, and then at ICANN.org. So Joran is Joran.marby at ICANN.org. I'm Adam.peak at ICANN.org. It's pretty simple, except I have an email again, peak, which confuses everybody. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know why I can that. So that is, I hope, how you will keep in touch with us. And thank you very much. I hope it's not been too boring and it's just sort of given you an overview of what people may have said to you this week. Thank you very much. So we have a few minutes, right, for questions and answers. So there is a question over there. Yeah. 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 Hi. Good afternoon, Mr. Uh, Mr. Brown. And, uh, I hope you're doing well. Um, I just had a question about um, uh, Ms. Brown. You're still a practicing lawyer, right? I'm not a practicing lawyer. I'm a member of the bar. <laughs> okay. I'm not practicing. That's fine. Um, I just wanted to know um, what your thoughts were regarding the uh, implications of the Microsoft versus the United States case about your privacy. I know it's a, going to be a um, pretty big issue since it's going to affect whether or not the U.S. can get the U.S. can get data from foreign countries at the, that might be relevant to. So, should I use my big voice? Or? Yeah, probably can use the So, I think this is going to be an important uh, first round of a case. Okay, this is, and I won't, but let's. We'll stay for another day in a long conversation, all of the legal issues in it. But let's talk about the policy issue here. The policy issue, as we all know, is that data doesn't stay where it started, where it finished, where it might even be at any one time. The data could be on any particular thing. What is data except some piece of code at this point, which could be distributed around the world? And forevermore, this problem of jurisdiction has been haunting, I think, the, uh, the internet space. This is what I say to you uh, with regard to, we now know that there's consequences to our distributed system, et cetera. Last week, I was at the internet um, jurisdiction and policy uh, conference in Ottawa, 
which is a, an attempt by um, a, a group of our, our colleagues to see if we can't use a multi-stakeholder collaborative process to start to figure out how to deal with these cross-border uh, data issues. I believe that that is the way forward and that there's an urgent need to do it. Alex, the courts of the global community are going to start deciding these things <coughs> in ways that are perhaps not the best for the, um, for the internet. So two points here. One, this is the first big case. That's why I think it's, there's cases all over, by the way. But this one is, is getting a lot of uh, interest just because of the players, et cetera, and where it is in the judicial system. But two, the right way to go on this is to actually have conversations about how we deal with particularly law enforcement issues and then other liability issues about where your, where your data lies and who is responsible for what with respect to it. So that's probably too long and too short an answer for your question. Thank you. Well, we have time for, we don't have more time for more Can I questions. say one more thing before yes, I go? Yes. I, I was remiss in not talking about the fellowships that are also open at ISA. One important area is the Internet Engineering Task Force. This is highly, highly technical. Highly technical. So I still don't know what they're talking about half the time. They're writing code. This is a coder's delight, okay? But for people, those of you who are doing this kind of work and are at that level, this is an amazing opportunity to go in and to actually learn what's going on and be a part of it. We also give fellowships for IGF and for other big um, uh, global meetings. So there's opportunities here for you actually, as I say with the disaster relief, to actually do the thing, to be part of what we do in these, uh, uh, in these forums. So there's lots more there and there's more to tell you about, but I wanted to make sure you knew it was there. Hi, yeah. <laughs> Kathy. Um, can you share um, some of the other things that ISOC's doing, like beyond the net and and, and uh, second of all, uh, you know, how the local chapters can make a real difference, especially if there's an internet shutdown or disasters or anything where the local uh, chapters are really the front line and how they can step up on their game. So let me go backwards. The chapters are affiliates of the Internet Society. So you are organized by yourselves, for yourselves, in affiliation with the Internet Society when and if you agree that the, the values that you hold and we hold are, are, in, are consistent. Many chapters do many different things on the ground. Depending on the personality of the chapter, some of our chapters are quite, really quite active in their own governments. They have things to say. They, they, they file, they, you can see the guy in the back of the room, for some of the kind of real activity that's going on that itself is its own microcosm of policy development, policy advocacy. Some chapters' personality is much more uh, technical. So you'll see the guys in Nepal bringing up the wires up the, the Himalayas to make sure that the internet is, uh, is on. You'll see the folks in, uh, in Mexico who went out and figured out what to do about people who didn't have connectivity in the earthquake. You'll see some of our chapters get a little subversive. They're going to figure out how to build you know, the internet in a box, how it can be on a, uh, a laptop so they can set up a network when and where they need to for reasons. The chapters are very different. They have different personalities. What unites us all is our desire to ensure that the internet grows, is preserved, and evolves. You can talk to each other. The technology, we have been demonstrating the technology between chapters for the last five years. We happen to use Zoom. We've had inner community meetings where we had uh, 50 chapters talking to each other. We have global, um, I'm sorry, quarterly community meetings where we'll have 70 chapters, our representatives, on the call. 
There's lots of ways for you to act locally and then to coordinate globally for the big issues. I'll say one last thing. I know you want to wrap up. I had the great privilege last week of meeting with Raul Echeverri, the Secretary General of the UN. Why did we see the Secretary General of the UN? Well, because the IGF sits in there, and because there's 10 more years of the IGF, and what do we want to do with the IGF? And do we want to make sure this is still a forum for people to come? And do we want those outcomes to be heard by the, the decision makers? Yes, yes, and yes. Can we get that kind of commitment from the UN, from a Secretary General who I think has a lot that he could offer in our space, who has kind of the temperament that we see we would love to have him do. Those kinds of things are what we do when we hear from you and what we want to tell, tell you back to you so that you can use them in your local governments. Well, thank you so much, Kathy. Uh, thank you for your time and Adam, too. I hope this uh, final, uh, this is final, uh, Perhaps this whole thing and uh, those people <coughs> sorry, that are staying here, I hope you can uh, take the opportunity and participate in our campus and cross anything and there's a lot to learn. So there are now there's going to be another few... Yeah, before you yeah. we would like to give you a small token of our appreciation.